Good evening, YouTube readers. It's Jesse here once again, bringing you a brand new episode of Manga Monday. Now, today we're going to be changing things up a little bit to uh, keep in the theme of Halloween. We're not technically going to be reviewing a manga, we're going to be reviewing a graphic novel. I could not let the month of October go by without doing a review on these graphic novels. Now the story behind this is, this is a set of graphic novels I found at my local library about eight years ago when I first moved back down here from Cumberland County. And um, we had a very small graphic novel and manga section that was located in the young adults. And I had almost read through everything else, and then these came in as a brand new graphic novel series. And there was only about, I think, two or three to start with, and then they started adding to them. And so when I started looking, working at my local library, I guess it never really crossed my mind that I never saw the set there again. I, I guess I assumed we had redrawn, you know, over time things get worn out and get thrown away. Well, not thrown away. Things get worn out. We pull them off the shelves and put them on the book sale, so, you know. They get a second life, but, um, and it just so happened about a month and a half, about two months ago, someone returned the entire stack of these graphic novels, and these things had been checked out uh, about five years ago, and they just brought them back, and I was like, I mean, yeah, it's a great series, it's funny, but, I mean, did you move and just forgot the stack was with you or uh, and, and and maybe they were just finally cleaning up maybe going to do a garage sale and they're like oh wow i checked these out a long time ago so i was like i saw them and i was like yeah i haven't seen these in forever you know but i thought you know i was kind of out of that you know back in about eight years ago i guess you could call myself a little bit more into the gothic uh seen then candy goth i guess i was and i've gotten older and matured but you don't have to be mature or goth or emo or anything to love this series it's just good old-fashioned dark comedy you just have to have a morbid sense of humor and of course what i'm talking about is the graphic novel series entitled lenore the Undead Girl, or The Little Dead Girl. And this series has been written by Roman Dirge. And uh, the thing that I really like about this series is you get these different volumes, and they have all this awesome cover art on the front. But um, what I really like about it is that Roman Dirge really personalized each volume, and there's always these little comic series mixed in with the Lenore series of just little weird stories supposedly from his life and it's things that just like you would think would be normal and they just go wrong is like even in one story he tried to tell this girl I think that he wanted to date that you know he attracts weird things weird things happen to him and you know if you followed along through all the volumes you would have to agree with the poor guy that weird things happen to him if they are true now, um, after reading all of these, I had to um, go and look up the uh, series myself, and from what I have read on the wiki page, at least, because he does have his own web page, but I think it's kind of being updated right now. You can't really get a lot of information off of his page, at least as far as I've seen. But um, they say that the Lenore series is based off of the old um, Edgar Allan Poe poem, you know, the story of Lenore, you know who the angels called, well, not the poem Lenore, the poem is called The Raven, quoth the raven, nevermore, but the lost the angels called Lenore, but this is pretty much supposed to be based off of that, except it's not some, um, cute, sweet, little sonic, creepy sonic like from Edgar Allan Poe, it's actually really, really funny. But uh, the first one I always get to me is the funniest one because the first one is where you actually see how Lenore met Ragamuffin. And as the series explains, Ragamuffin, who 
currently in the series, if you look at it, is pretty much a stuffed animal who is no more than half the size of Lenore. And but he's supposed to be this like badass immortal vampire. 400 year old vampire but the whole reason that he got stuck in this stuffed animal is because he killed i think a witch's uh sister and he she saw it so she put a curse on him to make him this stuffed animal and the only thing that could bring him back to life was a drop of blood which incidentally when um lenora i think was trying to patch up the stuffed animal she pricked her hand and um the blood fell on him but the thing is lenore's blood isn't normal so why it did reanimate him he was now forever stuck in the stuffed animal form and moving on to lenore apparently lenore who whose first name and last name is lenore lynchfast used to be um this little girl with a family apparently she caught pneumonia and died and so they took her to the, the morgue to do the embalming on her, but after they had put all this embalming fluid in her, she just popped back up and said, okay, I'm still alive. And as it leads to later in the series, she scared the poor magician so much that he swallowed like a whole bunch of the embalming fluid, and it's made him live for almost as long as Lenore, so at one point he was actually chasing her down to get revenge. And, um, who was it that put him out of his misery? I, be I believe, yeah, it was Ragamuffin. Yeah, because they were doing a spoof off of the original Alien movie. And, don't quote me if I'm wrong, but you know, when she says, get away from her, you bleep. Anyway, and, uh, so Ragamuffin kind of took him out. And, uh, another reoccurring, uh, favorite of mine is, um, a little demon from hell called Pooty Applewater. Now, Pooty is a little guy who has a bucket over his head that has eye holes and a mouth cut out, and he goes around with a pitchfork. Now, he's supposed to be Hex, one of his best guards. So, uh, I guess the devil sent, either the devil or death, sent Pooty to bring Lenore back. Because at some point during, like, the end of the first volume, Lenore meets death, and death takes her down to the afterlife. But after a while, she got bored and decided she wanted to leave, so he sent Pootie after her. Well, um, after Pootie meets Lenore, she convinces him to stay up top, uh, on the top side. So it becomes the three of them, you know, Lenore, Ragamuffin, and Pootie Applewater. And all kinds of insanity ensues. I mean, you think... Uh, immortal vampire who's been put inside of a body of a stuffed animal would cause all these troubles but weirdly over the series of the volumes he becomes the most level-headed one out of them all because there are moments when Lenore is like innocent like she doesn't mean to hurt the people around her and then there are moments when Lenore is just right out vindictive. And either way, it's it's all funny to me. I mean, regardless whether she's trying or she's not trying. And she just comes up with this crazy stupid stuff from nowhere. You know, talking about her nana, how she tried to give her nana to, um, to Ragamuffin, but Ragamuffin doesn't like nanners. And then... And she was just freaking out on him. And then she drew a face on him. She's like, oh my god, I drew a face on the nanner. Now I have to keep him. He can't let anything bad happen to him. And she gives him a kiss, gives the banana a kiss. And she's letting her lick her lips. And then she ate him. And then she's freaking out because she ate the banana who had the face. And it's just one of those weird series. And what's even better, each volume. I mean, unless you actually look it up, you can't tell which volume... Um, just by looking at the covers comes first or last because they're not numbered they just have weird names like there's one called swirlies there's one called cooties one's called purple nurples got wedgies I think I already said swirlies and then I just found out recently there's one called pink bellies so guess what I'm going to be reading soon oh and noogies don't forget noogies and cooties but yeah and, and, and if we're getting around to the um description of characters in this comic adventure because I have posted a picture of all the characters in the stories and you'll have to forgive me in this video because I had so much artwork of Roman Durgis that I posted up here 
the man does amazing work. It really does remind me of old, like, flash art you see in tattoos these days. And in my younger days, if I had that kind of money to lay down, there's a good chance I probably would have ended up with a Lenore tattoo. But, uh, I lost my train of thought. What was I about to say? Um, hey, ooh, and there was one called Wedgies, too, if I didn't mention that one. Uh, I hate when I lose my train of thought. Now I can't think. Dang it, Lenore. You got in my head. Oh, yeah, characters. And I could see them right here on my screen right now. If I had to name one character in the whole series I hate is Mr. Gosh. Mr. Gosh walks around in like an old 1960s tuxedo with the ruffles and all. And he looks like he's made out of like a little rag cloth and button eyes. But technically he's wearing a sack over his head. And his entire being in this comic is to follow around Lenore and constantly hit on her. Now see the thing is Lenore may be undead for a good long time but she's still in the body and technically still has the mind of a very demented but still a 10 year old girl so his entire intentions to Lenore are very pedophilistic and I don't like it. And apparently nobody likes him either. Not um, Ragamuffin, not Lenore or Pooty Apple Waters, so there is a time where um, Ragamuffin was temporarily returned to his immortal vampire form due to a big storyline you'd have to read. And he actually told him, like, if you don't leave her alone, I'm going to make you eat your own bowels. And so um, Mr. Gosh tries to hit on Lenore again, and like in the next screen panel, he's choking on his own bowels because apparently Ragamuffin ripped him out of him. But, uh... Yeah, if I had to pick a favorite, I'm a real big fan of Pooty Applewater. He's just hilarious in the things he can do, and then I pity Ragamuffin so much. But Lenore is such a great character. Roma Dirge did a really good job on the artwork in this graphic novel. And all of the characters are very unique and very nicely drawn. And like I said, if you had to have a character to hate, Mr. Gosh is probably the best one to hate. Because I think he was written to be hated. But it's a really good series you'd have to look into, and I'm probably sure you can find these in your local libraries if you looked into it. Because, I mean, if my library, with its still-growing graphic novel section, can have them, I mean, so could yours. So, it's definitely always worth taking a look and see if you can find them and give them a read. Or you could probably find them on um, Amazon or something like that, but... This is definitely my series for uh, Halloween to look into. Um, I'm glad I got to read them all again. And I honestly cannot wait to do my Friday review on my Halloween book. Uh, I definitely think this one's going to be a good one. I don't know if I mentioned it in um, my last video. But you definitely want to come back and... Um, Check out my video on Friday where I'm going to be reviewing a classic, which is Shirley Jackson's The Haunting of Hill House. And this is going to be super great. It's like my second time reading it, and I just like to refresh everything in my head, but it's going to be really fun. But, um, definitely check out the Lenore series. I mean, it's definitely worth a laugh. If you have, like I said, a morbid sense of humor like mine, you'll love it. And you could check out all the other characters. Um, but uh, it was nice uh, reviewing this with all you guys, so I want you to have a nice, safe, spooky night, and I will see you again Friday. Good night. <laughs>